Uh, so uh, I'm Dan Norris, the president of the board. I'm going to call the commissioner's meeting to order Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. Um, first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'm going to ask uh, Commissioner Armin to lead us in the pledge. Pleasure. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of, America of America and to the, and to Republic, the Republic for which, which it stands. stands. One, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice for all. for all. And thank you, Commissioner Pransky, for providing the flag. And thank you, Commissioner Armin, for leading us. Um, Mr. Township Manager, if you could uh, take the roll, please. Commissioner Brockington. Here. Commissioner Holland. Here. Commissioner Norris. Here. Commissioner Pransky. Here. Commissioner Rappaport. Here. Commissioner Armin. Here. Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Uh, thank you. Um, and uh, uh, Ed, our township solicitor, if you could make the Sunshine Act announcement. Yes, thank you. Good evening. Um, the board met in executive session uh, yesterday evening, August 16th, to discuss a number of matters of personnel and matters of uh, pending and threatened litigation. Uh, that concludes my Sunshine Act announcement. Thank you. Okay, number four on the agenda is public comment. And just to clarify or give a little more explanation on this item, um, uh, we, the commissioners, along with township staff, we're always looking to uh, make improvements where possible. We wanna be as transparent as possible. We wanna be open to the public. Uh, this item listed on the agenda at the top of the agenda or up front in the agenda, I'm going to open up uh, for public comment on any agenda items. So that could be any one of the committees that are going to be reporting today. If anyone in the public has a comment that they wish to make at this time about any item, they can do so now. Um, I wish to add though, that as we go through the agenda, there will be additional opportunity for public comment as we talk about each of the respective committees. So if you don't, uh, if you don't make your comment now, there will be another opportunity uh, later on. So with that explanation, I'm going to uh, open up for public comment and look for anybody who is raising their hand or if Allison spots anybody. Don't see anyone. And I don't see anybody right now. Okay. We will move on to number five, and that is I will uh, make a motion to approve the Board of Commissioners regular meeting minutes dated July 20th, 2022. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes. Number six, I'll move the acceptance of the executive summary financial report of the manager secretary for the month of July 2022. Oh, uh, before we take a vote on that, Commissioner Rappaport has a question. Uh, thank you. Well, first of all, I just wanted to note that, um, yes, there was a new format uh, this time, and so that was noted and appreciated. Um, I actually have a couple of questions, but I think I, I can do those offline and so we can go on with the meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, all those in favor of accepting uh, the financial report say aye. 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 And number seven, I'll move the acceptance of the accounts paid report for the month of July, 2022. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, they each pass unanimously. Uh, number eight, in accordance with the Home Rule Charter, Article 7, Section 702.A.2, the Township Manager re requests the advice and consent of the Board of Commissioners for the appointment of Robert Coyle to the position of Interim Director of Public Works. 
Um, I'll uh, I'll make, uh, let's see, he's asking for the advice and consent. The township manager is asking for the advice and consent. Okay, so I'll make the uh, motion to, um, to consent to that appointment. Second. Uh, second. Um, any questions or comments? No questions or comments. All those in favor say aye. 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 I'll just, uh, Bo, I'll just add uh, congratulations and uh, well, well deserved. And we, we need your assistance. Uh, clearly we uh, need, need the help there. Um, and uh, we look forward to your continuing to do the outstanding job that you've been doing. So thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Okay, number nine, in accordance with the Home Rule Charter, Article 7, Section 702A2, the Township Manager is also asking for the advice and consent of the Board of Commissioners for the appointment of Kelly Rebitz to the position of Interim Director of Parks and Recreation. Um, I will, uh, just in case there are comments, uh, I will make that uh, um, motion to consent to that appointment. Do I have a second? Second. Any comments or questions? Here's Kelly, now I see Kelly. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Kelly, so I'll similarly add our thanks and appreciation for the work that you've been doing. And uh, we fully expect uh, in this uh, new interim position that you will continue to do uh, the excellent work uh, that uh, that is needed by Parks and Recreation that you've been doing for so many years, frankly. So thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your vacation, Kelly. Thank you. Hold it. No, in, Director of Parks and Recreation doesn't get vacation. I was going to say it's now officially <laughs> over. <laughs> Too, late. Too late. I left. Good night, Kelly. <laughs> Um, okay, number 10. Number 10 is approval of expenditures over $2,500. And as we've done in the past, uh, this, is a, uh, this is for expediency purposes that the various meetings during the month, public works, public safety, and public affairs, they each have approved expenditures during their uh, specific meetings. Um, uh, and this is making a... Uh, uh, combining them and so that we can more efficiently just approve all of them at once. So 10A is I'll make the motion to approve all of ex all expenditures recommended for approval at the August Public Works, Public Safety and Public Affairs Committee meetings. All those in favor say aye. 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 Matt, let me just say I hope that at least in public uh, works, you didn't go overboard. I, I, I held the held the line there, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, 10B, we're going to consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve the following purchase orders for Grand Turk Equipment Company. Uh, two items, one in the amount of $3,585 for a power takeoff unit for the street sweeper, and a second in the amount of $2,777 for a refuse can tipper parts for recycling truck 608. Uh, these items uh, were discussed at the, uh, at the, what would it have been, public works meeting. Um, any questions or comments on these items? Anybody need further explanation? Otherwise, I'm going to move that we um, approve both of these purchase orders. Commissioner Norris. Yes. There, there's a there's a question in the chat that appears to ask: Are these um, purchases additions or replacements, uh, Mr. Slade? It's my understanding that they're replacements. Is that correct? That's correct. They're replacements. Yeah. Thank you. No problem, Thanks, Commissioner Armin. I'm not seeing any other questions. Uh, there's a motion to approve both of these items. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, 
Okay, nobody opposed. Okay, moving along, we're up to number 11, and that is the Public Works Committee met on August 3rd. Um, and let's see, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld or Commissioner Armand, who, who is going to present that meeting? Well, uh, if Matt would like to do so, because I have some questions about item A. So, Matt, if you want to carry on, since it's uh, you, your you committee, held the you're meeting. not allowed to ask questions. There you go. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm happy. To, I'm happy to take take it on. Uh, so, and, and the reason uh, for that is just so the public is aware, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld was not was not there for the Public Works Committee. So, the co-chair, Commissioner Armand, uh, led that meeting. Go ahead, Commissioner Armand. Dutifully and efficiently, mind you. Um, so, and expeditiously. So, that's right. So uh, uh, the Public Works Committee did meet on uh, August the 3rd, 2022. Uh, we have uh, two items to come before the board. The first is uh, item 11A, adoption of a resolution approving the sewage facilities planning module for Yeshiva Godola of Elkins Park located at 8201 High School Road in Elkins Park to permit the construction of a second floor addition over the middle portion of the existing building in order to house 108 students and 12 staff members for a total of 120 <coughs> residents. There was uh, an extensive discussion and there is uh, there are materials attached to the agenda. Does anyone uh, have any questions on this item? Commissioner I do, Fox. Commissioner Arm. I don't know if this was raised, but I think it's a relevant um, element to uh, approving this and any other sewage facilities planning module. Is there anybody online who's representing uh, the applicant before we get started? Well, possibly, I know Roger is online and I will ask some questions and if Roger can can at least weigh in, that would be helpful. Um, on the 19th of July in a public meeting in the Economic Development Task Force, Fred Gerloff from Aqua um, provided some answers to questions that were given to him both by the committee and by a number of us who are in attendance. And one of the statements that he made uh, in response to a question, he indicated that there's still hydraulic uh, overload and I, and I is still an issue throughout certain areas of Cheltenham Township sewers, which are now owned and operated by Aqua. And I'm wondering in the course of, um, in the course of what Aqua signed off on, which is um, the authorization that um, there would be uh, no, the, the, this addition and other additions would not create a hydraulic overload within five years on the existing collection or conveyance facilities. Uh, my question is, have, have the contractors, and I believe that's Ebert Engineering, have they run cameras through the area where both the Yeshiva Godola and the 222 Church Development uh, connections are proposed? Because when somebody from Aqua is making a clear statement to us that there are still hydraulic overloads and I and I throughout the township, I'd like to know if we're going to authorize um, and 44 additional EDU connections in a particular area using, you know, the, the gravity based, um, the gravity based uh, lateral to main sewer at church road that if they're gonna make that assertion that they've at least both in conditions of dry and wet weather taken some measures. Um, if somebody from Ebert isn't available, I'd ask Roger if you're aware that they did any camera work or anything. And then I would say the one condition that I'd wanna put on this is I'd like to know that they're doing that and they have a very detailed document that will follow 222 church, 69 pages, and they're basically making the same contentions. I just want to be comfortable that they've done all the due diligence necessary on behalf of the applicant so that we're not adding to what was at least broadly represented as hydraulic overload and I 
an eye issue still throughout the township. So if you could, Roger, I don't know if any of that was addressed having been absent from the meeting, but I'm wondering if any of that was done or if we can at least know that that is an intention before everything's gonna move forward. Uh, what was the specific question, whether they TV'd the lines? Yes. Uh, I am not aware that they did. Right. And so my concern is in, in going through and given the final authorization, you know, Aqua signed off on the fact that literally um, these extensions or tap-ins will uh, not create a hydraulic overload within five years on the uh, existing collection or conveyance facilities. That's a very broad representation. And I surely would like there to be a condition that says, you know, prior to us doing final authorization that they, they do camera that section of the line and subsequent when they're doing their, um, their uh, submission for the 222 church uh, road development that we get the same representation or the same effort. Um, so I would ask you, Roger, is that an unreasonable expectation from a township that where, you know, Aqua who owns our sewer lines still is um, concerned about either I and I or some potential for hydraulic overload? I, I do know that Aqua has done a substantial amount of TV work and I and I work. I don't, like I said, I'm not aware of, of this specific section being done and I, I can't speak for them. Okay. Could we look into whether that, in fact, that was done on that area? And sure. if not, I'd like a condition on this approval that sub subsequent to the work being initiated, they will do that just to make sure that since they're giving a five-year um, assurance that there's not going to be a problem, that the least they could do is demonstrate that, uh, that they've done the camera work or they've done the assessment. So that's, that's my request. Uh, to add a condition to this in order to, to take it on. And as I said, I'd like to put the same condition. They've just submitted 69 pages for uh, a sewer facilities planning for 222 Church. And I'd like the same representation and warrant with some documentation that they've done that. So thank you, Mr. Sure. Uh, Acting Chairman. I just wanted to put that on the table. That, that's that's fair, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Do, do you want to? Um, uh, is that a motion? That, yes, I'd like to amend. I would like to amend the resolution to include that as a condition. Could I? Could I just ask a question, Commissioner Rappaport? Thank you, um, Mitch. Are, are you suggesting just those two properties, or going forward, any of the uh, upcoming uh, submissions? for EDUs uh, where the sewer connections, that that would be true of all projects throughout uh, the township. I, I, I would like that to be a condition on any side, other than you know single or two connections. I'd like that to be, um, and I'd take the advice of our engineer, at what point does do additional connections have the potential to contribute to overload or if there's I and I conditions. So uh, to your question, Commissioner Rappaport, I'd like to, to put a condition on any uh, other than single or maybe dual um, connections that we have that as a condition and put the onus on Aqua to make sure, because what I want is I want the relief that we've been waiting for from, um, from Aqua's initiatives to relieve the sewer moratorium so that we can be more in charge of our development activities. So I don't wanna put that condition on this particular um, application, but I, I agree that that is in fact moving forward, something that we should ask of anytime there's uh, connections that exceed a particular threshold number. And, and you're asking it of the developer, not of Aqua, or you're asking it and, and how far are they just doing their laterals to the connection? I'm, I'm just not quite sure I understand the scope of your, what you're asking. Well, they're doing, they're, with the connections, they're doing gravity laterals to the main sewer connection on Church Road. And so that's the area, which is the area you expect whom to do? You, you expect Aqua to do it or you expect the I expect it to be done on, on behalf of the developer before we give them a go ahead 
for the sewage facilities planning module. However, it's done. I mean, they have Ebert Engineering, who has made the representation on behalf of, of I guess, both the um, Aqua signed off on it. I don't know if Aqua is being contracted by Aqua or by the developer. So I want, I, I would like that condition um, and, and for the, the uh, cameraing to be done so that, you know, if there's any I and I, if there is any potential um, problem with hydraulic overload, that it's identified and it could be mitigated before we add to it. Commissioner Zignefeld, if, if I may, um, I'm, I'm not sure, um, I understand your concern about this particular agenda item. I, I'm not sure that um, a, a broader discussion or um, would be, fall within the scope of this particular agenda item. Maybe that's something that staff going forward can go back and look at mm -hmm. to ensure that um, all criteria and no additional issues are going to be raised. But for this particular agenda item, the Yeshiva Gadola, um, is, is your is your motion that um, we add the um, the video camera condition or maybe table this for one month to have the township go back and ask them to do that or um, uh, or is it an approval with a condition? I think it should be an approval with a condition. I don't necessarily favor delaying them as long as they comply with the request. I, I'm comfortable uh, that they need to understand that before um, the, the uh, connections are going to be made, that they'll have taken that one additional step. Your Norse. Yeah, so um, I don't disagree, uh, Mitch, with the, uh, the goal of what you're trying to achieve, but uh, I think following up on, on Ann's comment, um, I'm a bit confused as to the parameters here, because on, on the one hand, we are, we as a board, as a township, we're pushing and encouraging Aqua and DEP to uh, remove the moratorium and open us up to more EDUs. Um, and yet uh, this step, uh, if we, uh, though it seemed to have just been cut back by uh, Commissioner Armand, but if we were to make this too broad a, uh, a further uh, requirement, we would be uh, in some ways uh, putting an extra burden or restriction on, on development projects. Uh, because just as Ann was asking about what it applies to, uh, Ashbourne Meadows is adding houses periodically, and I'm not certain uh, you know, to what extent uh, this, your, your, to what extent your comments would apply to them or not. Um, so I, I'm just expressing some concern uh, about uh, perhaps um, a bit of a, uh, a mixed message or too broad a message here. Well, Ashburn Meadows is operating under an approved sewage facilities planning module. So I don't see that, you know, we can retroactively impose that on them. But my point of view on this is um, this actually is a protective measure to make sure that, in fact, development is going to move forward. And, 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 uh, Board President Norris, the reason why I even raised this issue was because of the public statements made uh, by uh, uh, somebody who represents Aqua on behalf of the township, indicating that there's still hydraulic overload and I and I issues throughout areas of Cheltenham Township. And when I asked the specific question, well, how much uh, how much effort has been made to camera the entire township and how much money is Aqua spent? He could not give me an answer. So the way I look at it, this is a this is basically a precaution, and frankly, it's it should have been imposed, or it's something that it should be imposed by us as soon as the paperwork comes in uh, for any sizable development that has the potential to um, contribute to either hydraulic overload or I and I. And in fact, um, if we make it, you know, a condition moving forward. Then people, then then um, the engineering companies and those that are responsible for these things will obviously incorporate that into their um, sewage planning activities and making sure that they've done the camera, the cameraing effort before they uh, before they sign off and make the assertion 
that this will not create a hydraulic overload within five years on existing collection or conveyance facilities. I mean, to me, they can't make that repre representation without having done specific area cameraing and then an assessment. And I, you know, I think that uh, I think it protects us and it protects every um, every residence and every business that is connected to that those interceptors upstream and downstream. So actually it's, it's, it's a precaution that I think makes some sense. And this is for 44 EDUs. So I think it's worth it certainly for this uh, to basically say, well, prove to us that there are no issues there so that when we do this, we're not gonna create a problem or a concern for uh, any of the local residents or businesses who would be impacted should that occur. So- Commissioner Rappaport. Thank you. So I, I'm sorry, I because I, I agree that Aqua needs to be supporting solving the problem that they were supposed to be solving. But what I don't understand is these are new connections that they're asking for. So there's nothing to TV yet on by that developer except the current system, as I understand it, the current system in that area. So I'm still confused about the timing. We won't know if this project, I, there's nothing to TV of this project until they get their EDUs and make the connections into the interceptor. And so, my answer would be if there's no INI, uh, no evidence of INI or hydraulic overload in that section of the interceptor, then making those connections is fine. I'm so, just concerned that there could be but, a, a, but and at 44 what, uh, additional connections. Mitch, if I can, so what if, I'm asking is you're asking it of Aqua. You're not asking it of the developer or you're asking the developer to ensure that Aqua checks into the uh, interceptor in which section. I mean, I and what are the boundaries that those are my concerns, just the amorphousness of of all this uh, that we're talking about. I guess I'm no. amusing you again for a second night in a row. Uh, I heard no, Roger- not call. amusing me at all. Um, I'm Ro trying to get clarity on your motion. Roger, you had a comment? Uh, I was just gonna mention that, that ever since the transfer of the assets to Aqua, the township no longer has responsibility and it does not fall under their purview of whether a line is hydraulically overloaded or not. And I understand what Mitch is asking, but the resolution that's in front of you just relates to this being in this project being in conformance with your ordinances and regulations. It, it doesn't, the, the, the onus and the purview of proving and providing wastewater service falls on Aqua and it's not part of this resolution. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, doesn't Aqua receive a significant amount of money for each EDU that uh, that they're in connection that they're going to make on behalf of the developer? Uh, I do not believe so. Uh, PUC regulated utilities are not permitted to collect uh, tapping fees as are townships or other municipalities in the, in the state. Okay. It doesn't really change my concern. Um, so uh, uh, I'm, if, and if I can follow up one more, is is your concern with the existing lateral from the structure to the main or the main yes. itself? To, well, but actually both the structure, the structural to the main and the main itself, because you know that's a significant number of sure. connections, and I'm just again that, that's, I'm, that something like that would customarily be addressed in its own standalone ordinance, uh, which would happen either at a, at a at a change of ownership of a property or other milestones in a property that you could assign under that ordinance. Okay. So um, commission, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. I was gonna say, um, it, 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 it seems to me we have, we have a couple of options. Uh, option one would be to um, put the uh, agenda item up for a vote. Uh, or option two, uh, Commissioner Zingerfeld, if you want this to be reviewed and, and looked at in and of itself and maybe ha have some time to talk to staff 
uh, more thoroughly about this to address some of the concerns, it could presumably be tabled to till next month. Well, I, I would agree that we could table it to public works for next month, have a discussion with, with staff and also extend that discussion to both the, uh, the developer and Aqua and their engineering firm and see what in fact would be um, their likelihood to be able to comply with that request. So I'm more than willing to table it to, uh, to, the, um, to the next public works uh, session. Uh, in, in order to, um, in order to, you know, alleviate and sp spend any more time in this in this meeting, uh, I'll take I'll take that as a motion. Um, so, all, all in favor of tabling this uh, uh, to uh, the Public Works Committee, say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, so mo moving along to uh, item, I guess it's 11B, um, approval to waive the zoning hearing fee for Cheltenham Sports to start the process for additional signage on the clubhouse at Veterans Field. And, and um, somewhat, my recollection is that this, this um, description may not be entirely accurate. Additional signage sounds um, more grand than what I think had been asked, which is an additional sign. Um, and it was uh, made at the request of Commissioner Brockington. And if he's feeling up to it, maybe he wants to say a word or two about um, this particular request. Oh, I don't have too much of a voice, Matt. So, okay. you know, so, of, yeah. so the, we'll, we'll let the, you know, the, the, the minutes sort of speak for themselves. It's my understanding that Cheltenham Sports wanted to um, add a hand-painted sign to the uh, to the field, uh, and the uh, committee recommended to the board to um, waive the um, zoning hearing fee for that uh, for that request. So, um, unless there are any questions from the board, I will so move. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you, Matt. Yep, no problem. Feel better, Irv. Uh, Mr. President, that concludes the business uh, of the Public Works Committee uh, before the board. And uh, with that, I would move for approval of the minutes of the August 3rd uh, Public Works Committee. All those in favor? In favor of accepting the meeting minutes from Public Works, say aye. 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 Thank you, aye. Mr. Thank President. You. Norman. Thank you, Commissioner Norman. You bet. Uh, number 12, Building and Zoning Committee met on August 3rd. And uh, Commissioner Pransky, you chaired that committee. Yes, I do. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And before I mention anything about building and zoning, I have to admit I am in awe of Commissioner Zygmuntfeld that even though he didn't share this section of the meeting. He managed to stretch it out amazingly. Uh, so I'll keep this short. Uh, building and zoning did meet on August 3rd. We have nothing we need to bring in front of the township uh, commissioners at this point in time. So I move for acceptance of the minutes. All those in favor of accepting the minutes say aye. 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 Uh, Commissioner Pransky, uh, uh, another uh, efficient, uh, jo efficient job. Uh, thank you. Uh, and since you did that so well, uh, <laughs> number 13, uh, public safety. Uh, Commissioner Brockington, who's chair of public safety, uh, as has been duly noted by everyone, uh, is uh, not feeling 100%. And Irv, we certainly wish you a uh, full and speedy recovery. Uh, so I'm going to ask, ask Commissioner Pransky to tell us about the public safety committee meeting. My, my pleasure, Mr. President. Uh, and as a matter of uh, public safety or sanity, uh, Irv is just going to sit quietly unless I screw something up. Um, the Public Safety Committee may, uh, did meet on August 10th. There are a couple items to bring to the commissioners. The first is an adoption of an ordinance amending the township code to add a new chapter to 227 entitled Rental Licensing and Inspection to require the annual licensing and periodic inspection of residential rental property 
establish the du- establishing the duly the duty of affected I'm sorry owners to apply for rental licenses annually, establishing the imposition of licensing and inspection fees to require access for inspections, providing penalties for the failure to comply with same, repealing prior inconsistent ordinances, providing for savings clause and setting an effective date to see attached. I will ask first our able counsel to mention if there are any legal aspects, and then I'm gonna to go to Mr. Lynch, uh, who is in that department area, there he is, um, to go through this with us. Thank you, Commissioner Pransky. I, I don't have anything um, significant to point out from a legal perspective on this. I think what might be helpful is for Mr. Lynch to give the background on uh, why this ordinance is coming forward. And, and maybe I should go second, because I think his intro into the context for this uh, is actually a helpful first piece. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chief, let her rip. Good evening, Good evening Commissioners. Um, so the uh, ordinance that is proposed to be uh, adopted tonight by vote is the uh, rental inspection ordinance. Um, we have Cheltenham Township has uh, over 5,000 rental units um, the purpose of this is uh, to protect the township, protect the renters, and protect the property owners. Uh, we have acquired uh, or come across so many rental properties that weren't even registered. And um, as a result of that, this is going to help us get control of that. Um, this ordinance applies to our major apartment complexes, being the Towers of Wingcote. And Limit Gardens, Limit Gardens have an 1800 units in itself, um, plus all of the residential duplexes and triplexes we have throughout the township. Um, this will also apply to our other complexes like Brookview of Elkins Park, 900 Valley Road, and so on. Uh, what this ordinance does is gives uh, the township uh, the uh, basic uh, permission to enter these properties to inspect them. Um, for many different reasons, safety, fire safety reasons, um, living conditions, and things like that. Uh, and this will, we will be able to hold the landlords or the management companies accountable to make sure the properties are maintained in a safe and sanitary condition, which is clearly stated in our adopted 2018 property maintenance code. So, uh, there will be fees associated with this, which are all in the ordinance. Um, and uh, we will uh, be having uh, council and I will meet with uh, the Towers of Wincote and the Township Manager and Linwood Gardens. And we've already started establishing an agreement with them as to the percentage of units we're going to um, inspect and they'll be held liable to do the other inspections. Uh, so I will ask if anybody has any questions, um, and if not, we'll go back to uh, our solicitor, Mr. Diazio. The only thing I'll, I'll add um, that, uh, first of all, these inspections are announced inspections, and that was one of the questions that some, some folks raised throughout the process as this uh, ordinance was drafted. So this is these are not unannounced inspections where people are just coming into homes of, of residents. These are announced and therefore, again, for yes. purposes of uh, safety. Um, and in addition to that, um, some of the um, statewide uh, groups, the, the uh, Pennsylvania Apartment Association, um, there were other groups where input was sought and considered and the ordinance that you're seeing incorporates a lot of the feedback that those groups uh, provided. So it was not only um, uh, a combination of effort of uh, staff and you know internal folks, but there was also extensive outreach externally uh, to arrive at what we believe is a comprehensive ordinance for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, I see Mr. Brockington has his hand up, so let's be quiet and see if he can wheeze out a few words. Yeah. Um, will this ordinance give us the right to shut a building down? Absolutely. Um, and I'll, I'll speak on that. Um, again, safe and sanitary conditions. So uh, depending upon uh, how bad the condition is, yeah, we can, we can deem the structure unsafe. 
and uh, follow the other codes, the building code and fire code and stuff like that. Um, if, if you allow me, um, I'll use 515 Star Road as an example. And that's, that's one of the, uh, that's one of the uh, buildings for me that really, um, I thought we should have this ordinance because um, if we were able to have those inspections, I don't think we would have had to evacuate that building. We would have seen it a lot sooner. Um, but yes, Irv, to, your, to answer your question, Commissioner, yes, if the conditions are that bad during our inspection, Right. Yeah. But yes. uh, my, my, my issue though, Scott, is that what are we going to do with the, with a family now who could become homeless because, because of a bad landlord and that's where they're living. And now we're shutting them down, telling them they have to move. And I mean, I found out this weekend there's really not too many places to go in Montgomery County. If you're homeless, I won't get into that, but, but I, I get what we're trying to do, but we need to have something else to protect these families because we're just going to throw them out on the street and say, if you don't have a family member to live with, where do they go? And I get no, what we need to do. I totally get it. But there's, there's another part of that too. So the, in the adopted codes, um, it's clear in our adopted codes, it's clearly stated that the, uh, the property owner uh, is responsible to, um, if the residents are displaced for whatever reason, the property owner is responsible at their cost to put them in other places. Um, we went through this a little bit with 515, and we held uh, we held him uh, to uh, you know to that the best we could. Um, with this in place, this is just more teeth for us, so to speak. But I understand what you're saying, Commissioner. Um, but with the, the, the way the code, the international codes are that we've adopted and we enforce, there's wording in there that they're responsible for this. Thank you. Uh, and did you have a question or just light up? Okay, because you're light up for him. Um, this is a toss up for, for Scott or Ed. Um, take a building like uh, Elkins Park House or any of the Briar Estates, they're basically condominiums, but many of the owners rent their units. Okay, they sublet them out to someone do we have any provision for those inspections or if something comes up where we've determined that this unit's being rented gives us the ability to go in and make inspections and at that point ask the managers of the building to give you any other information about other leases for rental that are in that building yeah, I'll, I'll take that one so yes that's a good point we do have some apartment buildings in the township um, uh, like Shelbourne Plaza is it they're privately owned condominiums they that is not included in this because they're considered private residents the Elkins Park House where you do have privately owned condos but they sublease them um, in speaking to management there they have a list of the properties that are sublet so those sublet units are rentals they'll be they'll be affected by this and the owner of that condo is the person that'll pay the inspection fee, not the management company. Um, so yes, in, in those buildings where they're combination rental and owned, the rental units were, are subject to this. All right, and as we stumble across the uh, unlisted, unlicensed, unspoken of rental units in various buildings, be they houses or otherwise, uh, does this ordinance address that in any way? Uh, and is there reference to penalties, et cetera? Yes, exactly. There is, and it does. Um, so there, okay. you know, they'll be cited. Well, no, they'll be cited. Um, they'll be, re they'll receive, we'll work closely with zoning. So they'll receive a zoning violation notice for having an illegal rental property. Um, so they'll have to go through the zoning determination and everything like that. Uh, they'll be cited for having a rental property without the proper licensing and everything like that. And as we go through this, we'll, we're having the tax office on board. Um, to make sure that they're pro they're paying the proper taxes for a rental property and everything like that. So it's it's a, a it's a collaborative effort for um, quite a few departments. Excellent. Uh, is there a grace period attached to that when this goes into effect, or is it just basically that you've been cited you have thirty days to cure? Because there might no, be some no. people out there who say I've now I've got to take care of this. You know, is there? So here's, here's my plan with this, um, you know, with the adoption. Um, the next step is 
uh, it's already approved in the 22 budget to hire a rental inspector. Once we hire that person, then we're going to, we'll have letters delivered to our known properties. And as we find them, you know, as we're out driving around and we find the rental properties, we'll go into our system, we'll identify them as rental, we'll send them letters. So the inspections probably won't start till January of 2023. And there will be, even then, there's still going to be a little lenience with us as a new program, not to, you know, some of the people that just don't know about it yet. But yeah, we'll work with the residents and the management companies. But most of our major complexes are already well aware that this is coming. I've been having conversations with them and telling them that this may be coming. So Excellent. they're well aware of it. Excellent. All right, before we move forward on any sort of vote, is there any questions from the commissioners? Any co questions or comments from the public? Allison, do you see any hands anywhere? I take it her silence means no, she hasn't seen anybody. All right, no. <laughs> Couldn't find the mute button. All right, uh, since this is an ordinance, uh, Mr. Manager, we're going to do this by roll call vote. Yes, uh, this is ordinance uh, number 2443-22. Um, Commissioner Brockington. Aye. Commissioner Holland. Aye. Commissioner Norris. Aye. Commissioner Pransky. Aye. Commissioner Rappaport. Aye. Commissioner Armin. Aye. Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Aye. Mr. Chairman, the ordinance is approved by a seven yay, zero nay. Excellent. Okay, we'll move on to item 13B. Thank okay. you, commissioners. No, oh, thank you, gentlemen, appreciate it. Uh, 13B, approval of a purchase order for, is that pronounced Giselle Automatics? I'm not sure. In the amount of $26,691.85 to purchase 18 upper receivers for the department's patrol rifles. And this would be going to Chief Slavin. We did discuss this extensively at the uh, public safety meeting. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, this purchase is for replacement of the upper portions of our patrol rifles. Um, this is the most economic way uh, we can prolong the life of these weapons um, moving down the road. So we're at the end of their current lifespan. This would extend it beyond that uh, current lifespan. So we're looking to add those upper receivers and that's the cost you see in the ordinance request or the in the uh, request for purchase. Thank you, Chief. Any questions from the commissioners? Any questions from the public? Going once. Allison, I don't see any hands. I don't see you unmuting, so I guess we're good. All right, then I will call for the approval of that of said purchase order. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving on to 13C, approval of a resolution amending the town, Cheltenham Township schedule of fees to increase the EMS subscriber rates for 2023. See attached. Uh, where is Ken? Ken, are you around? No, Ken. Yeah. Is Kelly still here? That was, that was my next question. No, she's okay. Everybody's missing, but. Uh, basically, this is bringing it more up to the standards of the surrounded municipalities, and uh, this is just to help basically even the books for the township and those the other subscribers. And you have a question, Commissioner yeah. Rabbit. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, you know, I totally agree with um, the raising of the fees. What struck me was that the resolution really didn't explain, to my mind, the the actual basic reason uh, why we're doing it, which is to reduce the losses uh, or to help reduce the loss, the economic losses and the, um, uh, you know, the extra subsidy of our taxpayers. So I think that should be an extra, whereas uh, the reasons that are given in the resolution just don't hold water. Mr. Diazio, I am going to defer to you. Thank you. Um, so this, um, 
This ordinance, we can, I mean, if, if we'd like to, if the commissioners would like to table this, we can revise this. This was not, um, this was not one that uh, came across my desk for a detailed review. Uh, so if there are re, uh, language it's changes. It's just a resolution. It's not a, it's right. not an ordinance, right? It's a resolution. Yeah, but I think if we, if we modify it, uh, I think there's a, a, at least the, the, a reasonable uh, cause to extend it to the next available meeting and then just run it then mm -hmm. unless you unless we can do a change of resolution on the fly and I'd have to see what our able counsel says about that you're you're welcome to amend the resolution if there's um, language that's going to be able to be uh, articulated in this forum sort of on the spot what I was thinking and it you know obviously it needs to be verified as far as its validity but whereas the township wants to reduce economic losses and uh, subsidies to the from the taxpayers, you know, it's, it, it, it's sort of subtly in there for, in terms of the interest of the township. But I really think it needs to be explicit uh, because, you know, you can sort of construe anything to be in the interest of the township. So, Commissioner Pransky, if um, if or Commissioner Rappaport, if you'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution with that whereas clause, yeah. as long as Miss Elliott was able to uh, uh, copy down what you said for purposes of the minutes. I also have it written down, so. Very I'm, good. And it's uh, available. I so, I so move. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions about that before we put, take a formal vote on the motion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. All right. Uh, uh, item 13D, authorization to advertise the Board of Commissioners intent to consider the adoption of an ordinance amending the Township Code, Chapter 2205, Peace and Good Order, Article 3, Noise and Disorderly Conduct, Section 205-16, Violations and Penalties, to increase the fine for violation of Article 3. It sounds straightforward, but I'm gonna ask Ed one more time. Sure, so this is um, this is step number one of additional steps that the township will be taking to address the pop-up parties um, that have been uh, taking place throughout the township. The fine for violation with respect to noise is increasing from the current $600 level to $1,000 level. Um, and a thousand dollars is the maximum fine that's permitted by the first class township code for uh, this type of offense. Chief Slavin and I had discussions about um, the ordinance, um, and I don't. I, I believe that the, the department's on board with this change. And again, this is not the end with respect to the actions that the township's going to be taking. But this was uh, just one first step, and the manager and I will continue to look at additional ways that we can uh, address this issue. Thank you. Are there any, uh, Chief, you're nodding your head. Was that a, you had something to say or you're just agreeing? I just want to agree with uh, Mr. Diazio that we have been working on this to put some teeth into this uh, ordinance to prevent uh, further events like we've seen this past summer. Uh, so it's a joint effort between the manager and, and our labor council to uh, try to come up with a solution that will address that problem effectively. Terrific. Yeah, I think this is something that will be a, a very good usable tool to the township. I just wish we could put larger teeth into it, but the first class township code limits us that to that $1,000. Are there any further questions about 13D from the commissioners? Any from the public? Yes. All right. Okay, Howard. Yeah, I. what I wanna know is, is there a way, I'm a science guy. So is there a way to quantify how much noise at what distance, what decibel level, so that it's evenly applied. And Lord knows I live close enough to bunt to these parties and I am glad to know that this is going into effect, but I would just wanna know that it's evenly applied. That is something we also discussed and I'll let the chief uh, tell you how they do it, but uh, we, we try okay. to- You don't have to take time. If you're on top of it, I trust that. Okay, and that's appreciated. Um, all right, a great comment. Any other questions or comments from the audience? All right, in that Mr. case- Chair, I think, I think it would be helpful just to have that question answered in public for the public record. 
Okay, uh, Chief, you want to go through the procedure, Mr. Mr. Chairman? Um, th that this ordinance is or this um, resolution adjustment to the fee schedule is the beginning um, of a number of changes uh, that are coming. One is the decibel rating um, that is coming next. Uh, this just now um, amends the code to add additional uh, fines and f penalties to this. So there are a series of these uh, amendments that are coming. The next one is the decibel reading. Excellent. All right, and this is just an authorization to advertise. Um, and as these come forward, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more discussion about them. Um, are there any other comments or questions about this? Then I'll ask, I'll make a motion to authorize this to the board. Uh, actually, this is the board. <laughs> All right, so then I'll just ask us to vote for, uh, I make a motion to vote in favor of, uh, but we, the, the, the advertising. 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 That's what I was looking for. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think we're going to increase the size of this. Now I can see it better. All right. And the final item, uh, 13E, approval of a request from Cheltenham Fire Company for funding the amount of $15,000 to cover the cost of a site stipend to guarantee a daytime driver during the weekend, a weekday daytime hours. My apologies. Um, Scott, I guess this falls to you again. Yeah, so uh, as you know, the volunteer service is dwindling, but currently right now, Cheltenham has uh, members that can respond to the call, but the problem is having drivers to get the apparatus out. So with the stipend program, the way it's set up, it's going to guarantee between eight in the morning and four in the afternoon when they're the toughest hours that there's going to be a driver there. And um they'll have things to do around the firehouse, of course, and all that. But the biggest thing is it's guaranteeing coverage to get the apparatus out on the road. And I think this is an, an excellent idea. Uh, I was just down at the Lamont firehouse this past week on another issue uh, during the day. And while we were standing there, the alarms went off. And fortunately, they had the daytime people there to be able to get things rolling. So I think this right. is a great They're hit idea. or miss, too. I mean, you don't always have that. Yeah. So. Um, any other questions or comments regarding this approval of the request? Any from the public? I make motion then to approve the request. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any confused? All right. Uh, Mr. President, that concludes, from what I can tell, the agenda from the Public Safety Committee, and I would move to accept the minutes. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Pransky. All those in favor of accepting the Public Safety Committee meeting minutes say aye. 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 I think that was Irv barking in the background there. <laughs> and that brings us to number 14, Commissioner Rappaport, your Chair of Public Affairs, uh, which met on August 10th. Right. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, and we did have a, a bunch of discussions and uh, tabled a couple of items, so there's nothing left to vote on this evening. Uh, so I'll just move acceptance of the meeting minutes. Thank All those you. in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Commissioner Rappaport. Before I go on to number 15, I, I have a question, whether it's for Allison or Bob, um, did the, or, or for Barron, did finance, did the finance committee meet during the month of uh, August? Uh, we did not. No, okay, that's why it's not in the agenda. Thank you very much. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't an omission um, as I was on vacation for some of that time. So thank you. Okay, Commission uh, number 15, uh, the pension board met on August 5th. Um, and I was uh, not, uh, as the chair of that, I did not attend that meeting. I was on vacation. Commissioner Rappaport, uh, you, uh, according to the minutes that I read, ably led that meeting. Can you tell us about it? I don't know if it constitutes a full meeting if there was no quorum, but uh, um, hey, well, the, the minutes speak for themselves. Um, uh, and we were very fortunate to have our finance office well represented. And uh, 
and taking good notes. So uh, uh, I'll just go ahead and, and uh, we had some follow-up questions actually when we received a notice from uh, PFM later about some uh, uh, changes that, uh, that they're advising at the top, which seemed to contradict um, some of the uh, things that they were saying about our position of cash being a buffer. Uh, so um, uh, you know, we're following up on that. So uh, really, uh, I think the, the minutes actually uh, do a good job of covering what, what was actually covered in the meeting. So I'll move their acceptance. Uh, thank you. All those in favor of accepting the pension board uh, regular meeting minutes dated August 5th, say aye. 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 And I'll add that the pension board and the uh, pensions of the various uh, uh, union funds are in good hands and they are, are safe and doing well. Um, number 16, old business. We have a couple of old business items in the agenda and then I'll uh, ask if there's any additional old business. Uh, so the, the first one is um, that I will uh, make the motion to adopt an ordinance amending the code of ordinances of the Township of Cheltenham, Chapter 40, Pensions, Article 4, Board of Commissioners, Section 35-47, Right of Employer to Discontinue or Amend Plan to Discontinue funding for former, current, and future township commissioners, all post-retirement health care and pension benefits. See attached. So there's a motion on the floor. I'm going to open it up uh, first uh, to uh, commissioner or staff discussion, and then I'll ask for any uh, public discussion. Any comments or questions that anyone? Mr. President. Has? Yes, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Well, I, th I think it's telling Commissioner Rappaport in a previous uh, section talked about fiscal responsibility and the idea of trying to reduce loss. And in fact, uh, this ordinance and the action that, that uh, we're about to take is necessary to continue along the line of being responsible to both our residents and taxpayers. Over the last couple of decades, there probably has been somewhere between a million five and two and a half to three million dollars that was paid out for um, for health care for retired commissioners. And potentially at the time that that was passed and that ordinance was there, the township may have been in a much better fiscal position. As everyone on the board knows and in public meetings, we've talked about the fact that we have uh, $80 million of facilities needs, probably about uh, $40 million of uh, uh, flood control and uh, stormwater management and a host of other things. And this board has taken on responsible positions to bring under control responsible spending and to act in the best interest of our residents and taxpayers, even though some of those decisions uh, sometimes cause uh, some difficulty. We, we recognize the importance of the actions that we take across the board in trying to be more responsible and more accountable as well as more transparent. So I think it's important to just state behind this is a, a recognition and a set of actions that aren't isolated to this but reflect a much more responsive and, and much more cost accountable board of commissioners um, that, that is acting on behalf of, again, our residents and taxpayers who we're elected to serve. So I wanted to put that on the table as just a, a preamble in case there's other discussion uh, or things that don't reflect what in fact this board is obligated to do as part of our current fiscal and uh, prospective fiscal situation. Thank, Thank you very much, Commissioner Zygmunt Feld. You, you stated it extremely well. I, I also spoke at uh, the earlier meeting about this ordinance, uh, supporting the ordinance and the financial reasons, as you just indicated, uh, why we are proposing this. Um, as a matter of fact, Old Business uh, B, um, we have a $2 million sinkhole issue 
that was unexpected. We are constantly uh, dealing with uh, balancing our revenue against our expenses. Uh, and it is a challenge. And this is one attempt to try and reduce the expenses in a very prudent way. Um, I wanna restate what I stated uh, a number of weeks ago. This in no way uh, is to diminish the roles or contributions that former commissioners or current commissioners, retired, et cetera, have contributed uh, to the township. Uh, we, I know very well the time and effort that commissioners put into uh, the job of running the township, uh, and it is very much appreciated, uh, but uh, this is a, uh, a prudent uh, expenditure reduction that we are proposing. I'm now going to open, uh, I'm going to open it up uh, to, uh, to the public. If anybody wishes to make any comments on this ordinance before we take a roll call vote. Mr. Chairman, we have someone here at Curtis Hall. Oh, thank you, because I didn't see. Thank you. Um, commissioners, this is a uh, former commissioner, Jeff Moldauer. I'm speaking on behalf of, of the group of former commissioners who are affected by this ordinance. First off, I wanna you know, thank you for, the, you know, for the job that you're doing. You're, 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 you are looking after the, the town, township's taxpayers and you have, you have a tough job. We had a tough job when we were commissioners. But, you know, as an officer of the court, I believe in following the law as it is stated. So I have a question. Is Mr. Rudolph on, you know, on the, on the Zoom tonight? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. I especially want to direct this to, to your counsel. That would be section 40-45 of the Cheltenham Code. And it's, it's entitled, Right of Employer to Discontinue or Amend Plan. And if you look at, at section B2, the employer shall have the right to amend this plan at any time and to any extent that it may deem advisable. No such amendment, however, shall, and skip down to subsection two, deprive any employee who has retired under this plan prior to the date of amendment, and I assume that date of amendment will be tonight, of any retirement benefit under this plan or change the provisions thereof, provided, however, that any change or modification for the purpose of conforming this plan to the requirements of the Internal Revenue Code of the United States or of any other pertinent provisions of federal or state law, or of any regulation or ruling of any duly constituted authority in connection therewith may be made effective at any time with retroactive effect. So I'm questioning, you know, how, you know, what Mr. Rudolph's reaction is to this section of the code. Can, can you give me this section again? I was pulling it up. I'm sorry. That's Third. okay. 40 45 B subsection two. Okay. Forty five B two. Forty dash forty five B two. that subsection needs to be read consistent with 40-46. You, you, you can't read them in isolation. If 40-46 did not exist, you could have a plausible argument, but it ignores the existence of a same the, the following section that says, this is how you stop funding the plan. 
And I would note that for retired commissioners receiving pensions, those pensions would be unaffected. I would point out that 40, uh, that, that this same section also, uh, I'm sorry, the 4046 talks about when you stop funding the plan, the un, the vested, but not yet age 65 and eligible to collect a pension benefit that those individuals receive a partial pension based upon the monies that are currently uh, invested in the fund. Your interpretation that once it's awarded, it cannot be changed only makes sense if section 46 did not exist. Section 46 does exist. It says this is how the plan can be defunded basically and what happens to the participants then why is the wording the way it is in 45 i i did not draft it okay and, and i did i was not on the board when this was enacted so we're even on that but still it well it, I, you know uh, we we can get into parsing this if you look at b2 the second phrase prior to the date of amendment all right. Um, so if you're entitled to the benefit, you receive the benefit. However, once the plan is amended, then the, if the amendment's consistent with 40-46, then that supersedes whatever benefit you were previously entitled to. Okay, do you know when 40-46 was enacted? I do not know. I don't have that. I, I I have it in notes elsewhere, but I don't have it in front of me. I have a collection of the various ordinances. I mean, I would take a, you know, a qualified bet that that happened after, you know, I had retired from the board and after I had turned 65. You know, it just doesn't make sense with your interpretation. Well, all... If, if you look at the ordinance in the township code as it currently exists, it permits the board to stop funding benefits. You would agree with that? I agree. For certain people, it does. Okay. And the ability to terminate the plan it is my recollection, I don't have it in front of me, and I'm pretty certain of this, is that section 40-45 and section 40-46 were added at the same time. Can we move on? Uh, Good any further comment? And anyone else in the public have any comments they wish to make? I'm just pausing to be certain I'm not missing any hands. Allison, I assume you're helping me, but I don't see any hands. Um, okay, so there's a, a motion on the floor to adopt this ordinance. Um, we've had discussion. I'm going to ask our township manager. Uh, do I need a second on that motion? Second. Yes. Thank you. I'm going to ask the township manager to call the roll. This is ordinance 2444-22. Commissioner Brockington. Aye. Commissioner Holland. Aye. Commissioner Norris. Aye. Commissioner Pransky. Aye. Commissioner Rappaport. Aye. Commissioner Armin. Aye. Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Aye. The ordinance is approved with seven yeas and zero nays.
Thank you, Mr. Township Manager. Uh, moving on to 16B, uh, there's, I'll make a motion to approve the repairs of the Chelton Hills Drive sinkhole by Sarah Valley contractors in the amount of $2,026,058 as attached. Um, obviously, uh, this is a lot of money. There, there's been a lot of discussion about this. Um, I'm opening it up for questions from commissioners. Commissioner Pransky? It's not a question, it's more of a statement. Um, yes. Go ahead. This, this pothole is represented a lot more than just the hole in the ground. It's the hole in some of the old infrastructure. It's the holes in our budget because of lack of funding from state, federal, county, whatever. Um, and the fact that we're approving this and can actually get this started to be fixed, I think is wonderful for the township. But I just think it sheds light on the larger pro problem we're still dealing with. And I've discussed this with a couple of commissioners and I know I, for one, uh, want to start talking to the county again uh, about this particular problem and see if we can get some funds to help support the effort. Thank you. That would be much appreciated. Uh, Commissioner Rappaport, do you have a comment? Yeah, I do. Thank you. Um, a couple of things, uh, please. Um, I do know that uh, it needs to be repaired uh, for the safety of the township, but a couple of things. Um, I've spoken with our uh, engineer, but I, I do want it on record in case uh, we look back on this um, uh, and the kind of solution we're looking for, because um, in some circumstances, the township has purchased land that has been flood prone or other, uh, you know, other problems and uh, had oh, other solutions. Uh. Um, so I asked about the possibility of daylighting the body of water that is under the sinkhole that is part of the problem and creating actually a bridge rather than continuing to, you know, perhaps repair the infrastructure uh, underneath and underneath the, uh, you know, around the homes. And I understand that from an engineering point of view, um, that is not necessarily the preferred solution at this time. So I just, that's fine. I just want everybody to know that that was at least partially explored. Um, but my, my more, um, I guess my, my more uh, relevant point to the vote tonight, um, and I've, I've said this previously, and I will continue to vote that way tonight. Um, this also represents um, an area where there are private yeah, energy sure. companies sure. that benefit from our investment in our infrastructure, in our public safety, and, and the list goes on. Uh, I think those private energy uh, companies that are benefiting from our investment need to be part of the financial solution to the problem. And until they're part of the financial solution, I feel compelled to vote nay. Am I understanding your position correctly, Commissioner Rappaport? that you would vote, assuming others followed your lead, to leave the hole open waiting for that change from these private energy companies to happen? I, I think that they are causing a severe risk to the neighborhood, to the township. Um, there are perhaps other solutions uh, to leaving it open. Uh, but I think those can be explored by council and uh, by other uh, other means. Thank you. Commissioner Sigmundfeld, do you have a comment? Yeah, Mr. President, um, can we get a, a comment on what is clearly a, a non-solution uh, that's being discussed from either Mr. Phillips or from uh, our newly uh, appointed uh, interim director of public works to, to recognize the continuing risk that we face as a municipality that those who drive on that roadway face, that the local residents face. And this is one of those situations where unfortunately, 
we really don't have a choice of waiting anymore. Um, any inclement weather, any um, weather situation that we encounter is going to exacerbate and potentially create a, cata a catastrophic situation. So the reality is that we can't continue to afford to watch it. We're already th two and a half, three months into this. And we're just, you know, we've been warned by staff and by um, the folks that we are relying on of some technical knowledge to, to not hold on to this position and, and let something happen. Here's one other comment to make. Uh, behind the scenes, there are extensive efforts uh, to both federal, state and county potential funding resources. So the hope is that at some point, uh, soon to be uh, arrived at point, there will be quote unquote, a portion or percentage of those dollars that can be defrayed by contributions from um, some of the governmental entities and some of the fiscal sources that are in fact available and at least uh, receptive to the request that we're making. Thank you, Thank Commissioner Sigmundfeld. And I'll, I'll add to that comment, by the way, that uh, this, motion to approve was not a rush decision. As Commissioner Zygmuntfeld uh, mentioned, uh, this sinkhole occurred two and a half or three months ago. Uh, there has been extensive discussion, extensive review. Um, we've had engineers in there. We've put this out to bid. Um, and even after putting it out to bid, we solicited additional bids. Um, it, it is incumbent upon us as commissioners uh, to repair the situation and address it. Um, and that is what that is what we are doing here. A uh, question from uh, Jeff Jericho. Jericho. Jericho, thank you. And I apologize, I, I'm not an engineer. And so I'm wondering if there's anyone there that can kind of dumb down what exactly uh, will be done there. I'm not quite sure of the extent of the problem, but I guess my bigger question is, what kind of guarantee is there that any repair will will be sufficient. Um, and third part, is there any risk? I mean, I'm sure there is a risk. Um, how big of a risk is there um, to the neighbors that whose homes are right along that block and some of them whose homes look to appear to be structurally uh, compromised as well? Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of, well, I do believe that this needs to be fixed. I think the township needs to be uh, exploring uh, what other options there are because uh, to perhaps daylight um, this in the long term, because there are definitely uh, structural concerns in a lot of properties over there. Uh, it all leaves us with over here in this part with a lot of uncertainty about uh, our neighbors. Roger, would you be the one to address a couple of those questions? Uh, sure, I could, I could give them a try. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, could you re repeat your first question? Yeah, the first question was, you know, I, I'm not an engineer, so I've been wondering if there's a way to dumb down what exactly is being done there for $2 million and, and, and how it will impact, um, you know, what is the guarantee to that, that, it, that the street, that won't happen again, and perhaps it won't happen in the neighbor's yards. Sure. Uh, so, so the first part of that is, is, is what we'll do. Just give me, let me play around. Can you give me a dinner? Uh, Mr. McEwen, your mic is open. So, so the, the first step will be uh, they will put in what's called shoring, which will, will solidify the walls of the hole and, and they will excavate the wall. The, the, what the condition is there is the wall of the culvert has, has been compromised and is cracked and offset and there's a drain pipe that is crushed. So they'll be restored. They'll, they'll rebuild the, the culvert wall uh, from the inside and from the outside. Uh, replace that drainage pipe and then uh, refill the hole with structural fill. Uh, so that's that's the fix, and that I that's a very oversimplified de de uh, description of the fix. It's much more complicated than that, but that's that's basically what's going to take place. Uh, can can it be guaranteed that it that it won't fail again? Uh, you know, nothing's a hundred percent, but I have a, a strong uh, confidence that it, in this exact spot where the repair is taking place, yes, it'll be that will be solidified. Can it happen a hundred yards down the road? Absolutely. You know, we we can't see through the ground to see where other uh, other sinkholes may pop up. 
uh, Bo Coyle and his and his staff have inspected the inside of this culvert and uh, with a good degree of confidence we feel that it's in really good shape other than this one place where it was compromised so is there uh, is there value in in would you say exploring the op the possibility of uh kind of date as, as campus and rapport said da daylighting um this culvert or this this stream that runs underwater which you can clearly tell over on chelton hills is causing some structural at least something is causing some structural problems to the homes over there um and, and that just leaves us wondering whether greater steps should be taken other than just you know this small fix here yeah, day daylighting this stream in here would 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 remove Ivy Lane, basically, uh, and all the houses along Ivy Lane, uh, along with some other houses on Shelton Hills Drive to fully daylight it to make it like it was a natural stream. Uh, one of the issues in this area is we, we found in, in examining the sinkhole and with other subsequent geotechnical reports is, is this entire area was constructed of fill when these houses were built. And, you know, some of the fill is substandard. And there's, there's numerous places throughout the township where uh, houses are built on fill that are experiencing now structural damage after a long period of time. Uh, uh, Jeff, I would just add that if you're looking for further detail, the, uh, the bid, the contract uh, proposal is attached to the agenda. So it's on the public website. I saw and and they, they do provide a lot of detail there as to uh, exactly what they're planning on doing uh, step by step. I, I'm not an engineer, but I found that very, very informative. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, yes. Uh, maybe just to help give Jeff a little more maybe comfort if, if there's any. Um, the contractor's online, and if uh, the contractor would want to speak a little bit to the work they're going to be performing. Yes, I am online and uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Vince Campalone. I'm with Central Contractor. Um, the intent here is to, first of all, secure the area and uh, put into temporary measures that we need to support us during the, uh, the time sequence needed to get work done. And that means bypassing the stream that's in the culvert. And uh, I don't think anybody understands the, uh, the you know, the uh, size of this culvert. It's, it's a tunnel. It's not uh, just a pipe in the ground. And uh, we're going down there to dig out the side of it because the wall caved in. Uh, this wall could be anywhere two to three feet thick. Besides that, the structure itself has to be supported, the roof, because this, this uh, tunnel is 30 feet in the ground. It's not, I mean, it's literally the top of your house is the bottom of that tunnel. Uh, so there's, there's also 20 feet of earth on top of it. So we have to support the top of that roof inside of the culvert and get all the engineer calculations correct. Uh, to make sure we don't have an issue with that. There are two gas mains that are out there, 12 inch, substantial concerns that we have to work around and conditions that are, uh, that are necessary to get this completed. If there's anything, I mean, literally the work involved is not a, a two week or a two month work. It's good, every bit of three, but possibly four months worth of work. And now we're coming into the rainy season and kind of, we got to be more concerned. You know, with the hurricane. If I could just add too as well, um, I'm not sure how things were done in the past, but we're going to make sure when this repair is done, it's done right. If there's further work that has to go, it that to follow this so that there are no future items that we know of but just want to shortcut this is that we're going to make the repair right we're going to fix it right the first time uh and if the scope of work expands it expands it'll come back to the board uh but we're not in the business here of just let's just put a patch on it and then it breaks and, and this here commissioner to your to, to, to respect this here um 
it's not something you go and dig out with a little piece of equipment. This is substantial deep. It's 30 feet deep and no one really understands that until they come out and see it. And that's why even to, you know, with the fill that's there, you've got fly ash, you know, that's in there. Yeah, everything, um, everything will be put back the way standards, typical PennDOT procedures is what we follow. But we will also too, as Enbridge will be out there, Pico will be out there every day for construction, for safety issues. Uh, we will have uh, between our fire staff, fire marshal, again, monitoring all this work. Uh, the township will have an inspection company out there as well to make sure that uh, we're trying to communicate with everyone in the neighborhood of how things are going, how we're progressing, uh, and, and to ensure as, as much safety as we can to everyone, not only on the job, but also to uh, the neighbors in that particular area. Uh, Roger, there's there's a question from the audience. I'm going to ask you. You you mentioned that the the uh, fill in this hole was uh, unsatisfactory or or potential cause of the problem. Do we know? Do we have any information on the source of fill that's used elsewhere in the township? You yourself suggested that uh, I, other properties may may also. Have such yeah, I would, I would have no way of knowing that. That was done 75 years ago. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments before we bring this to a vote? I just have a quick one. Yes, go ahead, Howard. Uh, I, I see that there's a list of nine items that are qualifications and exclusions. So considering that uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Camp alone, I hope I said your name properly, uh, is here. Is there a way that in worst case scenario, we need those things or those things that his company provides? I think the permitting and fees by others, that's clearly not something you do, but I guess, how do we know what in addition to the $2 million that both the township is gonna incur by the, I guess the traffic control and all of that, is there an overarching budget beyond this contracting cost. If those items are necessary, I think you'll know ahead of time. Um, the concern with us is we're, we have to test all the material that we take to the landfill once we exceed a certain volume. Uh, and the meaning by, by that meaning is that if we assume that this material, we don't have that kind of material that needs to be tested or volume wise. But once we start digging and we see it's, you know, from past experience, if it's not suitable material, our, our landfill just pulls right out. Um, then we'll have, we'll have to address that. As far as, the funds and where that is at um, through the insight and tremendous wisdom of the board implementing a stormwater uh, fee this year. This is the this is a great example. Uh, I, I hate to say that we, we have to see an example this quickly, but an example of the types of things that the township will be wrestling with for years to come, but to have a funding source to be able to pay for these types of things as well as because of the prudent oversight of the board that there is fund balance for these particular emergencies that come up out of nowhere. Um, so uh, those funds and dollars are there uh, by the board's oversight and then the management of Danielle Pearson from the finance uh, uh, department uh, to be able to manage funds in that. That's why we have these dollars available for these type of emergency situations. Teresa, you have a question? Teresa, can uh, Yes, um, thank you for the response regarding the fill. And I was curious to know if there have been any or sufficient soil samples taken and recorded and held onto so that we have it for record. For contamination and substance. Yeah, for substance or contamination or just the contents. 
is that something that is done uh, as part of an impact statement or some environmental record? Uh, in this in this case, uh, an environmental impact statement is not required. Uh, I understand, but yeah. but as as uh, as Vince had mentioned, uh, when the when the soil is coming out of the ground, there's several steps that you take uh, before he takes that away to a landfill, and it's a it's a visual inspection. And if there's anything that looks uh, to where that soil would be not suitable to go to a landfill or something, it would be identified at the time of of in of the excavation and then it would be tested uh before it's it leaves the site so the it, the township actually has a record of that they would have a record of any testing that would be required during construction yes okay um i ask these questions because the evening of the water main break on church road when the enbridge um inspectors showed up um they were quite concerned about the subsurface and actually were not sure if it had washed away or not. So uh, it did take them quite a while to, to figure that out, but there really wasn't any clear follow-up as to what that soil content was, you know, and also I'm not sure that the township had any record of what kind of fill went in um, we did speak to Mr. Lynch at some point as neighbors about it, and <clears throat> I'm not sure if, you know, what kind of fill is used when they have this type of problem. They, I'm sure they use something that's more substantial. Are you talking about the fill that was there prior to the sinkhole or the fill that what was there is prior to the sinkhole and also what fill was used uh, uh, to fill it, to fill the hole. There was a question about that a couple well, days after it was. Pr prior to the sinkhole, we have we really have no idea what, what was used to create that fill other than looking and see what's adjacent to that hole now. When when the when this fix takes place, when it's when it's corrected, it's going to be filled with with uh, you know stone and aggregate, PennDOT approved aggregate. Uh, and soils uh, to solidify that. Okay. Well, as, as we go through the series of um, excavations, as well as what's going on down by Arcadia, perhaps we could hold a record of what was used at these different sites to determine, you know, just for the environmental impact of, uh, you know, our roads. I mean, it's of a lot of concern because they've gotten quite busy with traffic and trucks, et cetera. They weren't really designed for the heavy traffic that we now are looking at. And right. thank um, you, Teresa. Yeah, thank you Mr. very much. Mr. Phillips, I think that's the, the, the crux of, of what Teresa was saying, basically, that we if we fill it based on what was, it will it be sufficient for what is and what's coming? Um, and that was, I think that was, if I'm correct, Teresa, that she's worried more about the load now and moving forward than what it used to be. And again, yeah. the, the the backfill that's going to be used once this is is corrected is all you know, PennDOT approved structural fill. So you know, it's it's going to be fixed the right way. It's it's a sub substantial way to do it. Thank you. Um, not seeing any other questions, I'm going to. Uh, call the question. There's a motion to approve its uh, motion, and I believe it has been seconded to approve the repairs of the Chelton Hills Drive sinkhole. I'm not in the form yet. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah. Uh, by Sarah Valley contractors in the amount of $2,026,058. Mr. Mr. President, if I may? Yes. Given the number, given the dollar amount, would you be okay if we did this by roll call vote? Certainly. Go ahead and call the roll. Okay. Commissioner Brockington. Aye. Commissioner Holland. Aye. Commissioner Norris. Aye. Commissioner Pransky. Aye. Commissioner Rappaport. For the reasons I've repeated over and over again, nay. Thank you. 
Commissioner Arman. Aye. Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Aye. The motion is approved with six yeas and one nay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Township Manager. Uh, old business uh, C, and that is an update on the Enbridge, Texas Eastern Pipeline Project on Church Road. Who's giving us an update or who put this on the agenda? Chief Slavin will give an update. Ah, Chief, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm gonna give you a brief update on this. They have broken ground there. It was a slow start uh, for the first couple of days there. Um, I was out there today, a broken ground. They are working on the, uh, the area where they're, where they're uh, questioning. So hopefully we can get resolved sooner than later. Uh, you know, my feeling on this, this could run up to 20 days. So I'm hoping we get it done sooner than that. Um, but they are breaking ground now uh, and it is progress in my eyes. So for a couple of days, we were sitting idle as they set up Jersey barriers and stuff. There was no digging then. Uh, the road was closed off, but now they are working on it, uh, currently addressing the issue. Thank you, Chief. And to the public, we're aware that school is starting soon and we are making every effort uh, to pro uh, properly detour, uh, but more importantly, making every effort to have this completed uh, perhaps before school starts. Commissioner Armin. Thank you, Mr. President and um, uh, Chief Slavin and Fire Marshal Lynch. I assume by the time we get to um, the next month's first public works uh, committee meetings, we may have a better idea from Enbridge as to what the status is and whether it's going to be a 20 day job or whether it's going to be a shorter job. And if uh, we have that information, it would be appreciated to have another update. Yeah, well, one of us will provide that information to you. Um, I know Ken's been up there a couple of times especially with the ambulance, but between the Fair three enough. of us, and oh, you'll have something. Very good. Thank you. And then the only other question um, that I wanted to clarify, and I think, I think it has been clarified already, but just for the record, um, Chief, um, we're all aware that Enbridge enlisted through um, off-duty um, uh, or secondary uh, jobs, uh, law enforcement officers from Cheltenham Township to work the site and um, I'm assuming that notwithstanding their sputtered start they did uh, they do continue to pay for uh, our law enforcement officers who are working those uh, outside jobs. Your understanding is correct Commissioner we do have a sign a work agreement with them to pay off-duty officers for their work performed. Very good thank you Chief. Thank you. Thank Commissioner you, President. President. Yes, thank you, uh, Board President Norris. So, Chief, I do have a question. Have your police officers observed um, any unacceptable behaviors from motorists who are trying to basically um, use the detours or to move into areas where we had concerns that there would be um, overflow traffic and people trying to take advantage of, you know, moving through the community in places where the traffic shouldn't go. So I'm wondering if you've gotten any reports or feedback from your uh, from uh, the officers to this point. Commissioner, I haven't received anything negative uh, as of today. Um, there, is, there are plenty of access roads off of Willow Grove Avenue to get back in that area. It is closed off there. So there'd be multiple ways for uh, residents or visitors to come into, uh, into that section if they needed to get there. Um, so far, so good. Um, I'll, I'll continue to ask officers working in detail if we have issues with the detour. And could we also ask uh, representatives from Texas Eastern or Enbridge to be available for the next public work session? Because I think that's, uh, I think to Commissioner Armand's point, we want to get a full status and make sure that they're going to be finished before that uh, August 29th resumption of a school date. And I've noticed there's already school buses that are driving their routes to get uh, familiar with things. And I'm concerned that that, you know, at least at this stage, it could represent an additional problem. So let's just make sure that all those things are um, anticipated and covered off on. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sigmundfeld. Allison, would you like to tell us uh, what we're looking at that you put on the screen? Maybe if I can, Mr. Yeah. President, this sure. is an image from today of the of the work. Um, just to give a visual behind uh, what's taking place, uh, I appreciate um, Chief Slavin actually uh, getting this, so you can at least get some idea of what it is. Um, 
our hope is that where they're digging right there, that'll be the extent of the dig and they can button it up and, and wrap up. Okay. Looks good. Any other questions or comments? I'm seeing any, I'm going to uh, open uh, the agenda for any other old business for the Board of Commissioners meeting before we go on to new business. Okay, uh, number 17 is new business for the Board of Commissioners. And there's one item on the agenda, and that is approval of a resolution authorizing the township manager to execute a settlement agreement with PennDOT in order for the township to receive payment in the amount of $88,584 for the 2021-22 winter services season. See attached. Mr. Township Manager, would you like to give further explanation as to uh, why PennDOT is paying us the 88,000? Uh, commissioners, I'll take that one. This is a huh. standard agreement that is common throughout the Commonwealth where PennDOT pays the municipality to maintain certain roads that are state owned uh, so that we can keep the roads open and the township moving. Oh. There, there are standard fees and oh, okay. it's the resolution for us to get paid. But we're barely hearing you, bro. You gotta get a little closer on the mic. Well, I this, no. this is just the routine. This is not for any extra services. No, this is just a routine agreement. It's common throughout the state of Pennsylvania right. or PennDOT okay. municipality to maintain the roads in wintertime. Okay. Any questions or comments on this item? Um, then all those in favor of uh, authorizing the township manager to execute this agreement with PennDOT, say aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions? None. Mr. Definitely Mr. President. Mr. President. One yes. more item under new business. Yes. Uh, we received information um, that we are, as the board's aware, we are part of a consortium in which we bid together for fuel, which in, in, involves, includes Upper Glenid, Lower Glenid, Upper Dublin, Telemincin, Plymouth, Rockledge, Horsham, Lower Marion, Upper Marion, Lower Salford, Whitpain, Montgomery, and Upper Marion Township. And on June 9th of 2022, Upper Mary and their Board of Supervisors awarded the 2022-23 Montgomery County Consortium Vehicle Fuel Contract to Petroleum Traders of Fort Wayne, Indiana for the price differential of 0 0.1251 for regular unleaded, 0 0.0243 super unleaded, and 0 0.2014 for B2 diesel. Uh, the contract term runs from September 1 of 22 through August 31 of 23. Um, and the combined uh, gallons, which makes it attractive for people to uh, bid on this is uh, 1.3 million gallons of gas, uh, one point, a little over 1.1 million gallons of diesel. Uh, that's not all what we use. We use a fraction of that number, but that's uh, the advantage of the consortium putting that together. Um, and how that is calculated is off the OPUS report, which is the oil price information service. It's a publication that comes out every week and it shows what the rack price is on different communities throughout the country. And it would be based off of the rack price in Philadelphia. Uh, I know Jim Slade uh, is, is in, involved with that um, and also assists in managing that. And Jim does a great job with that. Um, so the only thing they would look for is a concurrence from the board um, on the fuel contract for the coming year. Any questions or comments on the fuel contract that was just described? Dan? Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Sigmundfeld, yes. Do we, um, uh, Township Manager Jankowski, do we have a dollar amount anticipated commitment on our end? Uh, for, for what we would spend on this? Yes. Um, I think what we're gonna do is not to avoid your question here, but in next months, and we can have it for the public works committee, actually what our expense and try to compare 2021 to 2022, yeah. 
because there has been a significant increase in the expense of fuel this year. Um, so I, I don't want to give you a rough number here that isn't accurate, but we will present uh, in your committee next month to show what the difference is. And it's one of the concerns too that we continue to monitor um, uh, of the expenses, the increased costs in fuel this year. Are those who are overseeing this, are they buying futures so that they're at least having uh, both an up and a downside protection uh, in order to, to quote unquote, have some control over what the ultimate exposure is gonna be? Well, I think that they don't. And the reason why the price, which I You went blank, Bob. You got mute, you went. Oh, sorry. Um, as I, I think the advantage is, I don't believe they do that, but based on the Opus report, as the cost, uh, the rack price of oil goes up and down and fluctuates, we ride with those prices down based on the small increase over that rack price. So I believe this is an advantageous way instead of going with a fixed cost as the price of fuel goes up. Yeah, that hurts. Uh, but as it goes down, we take advantage of those. And Jim, I'm not sure if I'm missing something on this that you, you would want to add. No, you said it quite well, actually, and we can speak much better about it after we get the figures for 2021 and 2022. Yeah, thank you, Jim. I, I, I would like to add, I'd like to see what the uh, expenditures were for last year and what's projected for the coming year. Understood. Commissioner Rappaport? Yeah, and I, I realize this can't be done overnight, but is the consortium, and if it isn't, it, it needs to be pushed in that direction. Uh, the consortium needs to be thinking long-term sustainability uh, and energy conservation and uh, other alternative ways to do the jobs we need to do, to do uh, with less fuel oil. So Commissioner Rappaport, we can certainly be doing that on our own separate from the consortium. Of course, of course, the, but right, to the extent I, we I know, I know when we've been talking about ready for, you know, whatever the 100 and all of the other uh, is sustainability initiatives for, that involve energy. Um, it's always been well. It's hard for us to do it. We need to talk to the wider group. We need to, you know, get a regional solution and so forth and so on. So that's, okay. yeah, they're not mutually exclusive, right. but uh, we need to be doing all of that. And, You're right, and they're what not better time to mm -hmm. mention it than when we're talking about uh, major increases in fuel. No, I agree with you. I, I was more thinking of ways that we can reduce Absolutely. the use of fuel. We, we've talked about uh, uh, the idling of, uh, whether it's school buses or police cars or, or other methods where we can be reducing uh, our use of the gas. So whether it's gas or diesel. Other questions or comments? Uh, then uh, Bob, am I correct? Uh, you were looking Mr. for- Mr. Chairman, I think, I think there's a question from Kathy Bowers who has oh, a hand raised. I did not see it. Thank you. Kathy, go uh, ahead. Hi, good evening. Um, just real quick, you just happened to mention since we're talking about the um, the, um, the uh, public works and using gas. So one thing I noticed over the years and I guess has to do with the climate and everything is um, that during leaf collection season that um, many a times they're coming down the road and there's not a leaf with the big truck with the guys walking and none of the leaves have fallen yet. And I just don't understand why we don't push that back um, you know, to, to one way to save gas, I'm not sure. It just looks like a waste of man time and a waste of fuel and energy. I'm not sure. Any any comment on that or <laughs> why we don't wait and and collect the leaves when the leaves actually fall? Well, every neighborhood is different, and um, <laughs> I mean, just because you don't see leaves on your street doesn't mean the two blocks away leaves aren't loaded we have to keep the roads clear to open all the storm drains just in case we have those rain events uh if you take a ride down the Shelton hills ivy lane elkins no no i understand you have your bigger areas with your bigger trees 
and everything like that. But these, you know, I mean, definitely over in our neighborhood, you can see that there's definitely nothing going on. I'm just wondering, you know, is there reason leaves are, you know, they're not falling as quickly, why we can't push it back some in certain areas and focus on the areas that do have big, just an idea, a thought, you're wanted to try to save gas. So that was just my comment on trying to save gas. Some way to okay. think about it. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, am I correct, uh, Mr. Township Manager? You, you were looking for our concurrence uh, to go ahead with the uh, consortium contract? That's correct. That's correct. Okay, any comments or questions on that? Uh, then I'll I'll make the motion uh, that we that we continue with our participation in the consortium. I guess is the the way I'm going to state it for our fuel contract. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, Bob, I think that gives you what you were looking for. Yes, thank you. Uh, any other new business for the board of commissioners meeting? Mr. President, I would just like to let everyone know that we began advertising our police entry exam today. Um, the uh, applications will go into effect in August 24th is when the registration part will open on our website. Uh, and this will be an application they can fill out online and trying to make it as easy as possible. I'll be advertising and sharing this with everybody I can think of. I'm asking for your help in sharing that with any groups that you think uh, would be interested. We're looking for excellent candidates. Uh, to take our test and be a part of our department here and I would appreciate any support or any help you could give us on that end as well but we just launched that today the test will be October 1st at Cheltenham High School and we've worked out with the school district to hold the testing event there as well so um, that was a great help to us along with township staff and helping us set us up, set this up um, appreciate everyone's help with that thank you chief slave and I'll I'll just add there um, we, we have an excellent police department and they do a great job keeping uh, our businesses and our residents safe. Um, so we're almost always uh, due to uh, turnover retirements, looking for uh, new police officers. So as the chief just indicated, uh, right now is one of those times. Uh, if anyone in the community knows of someone who would be a good candidate, so in addition to looking for obviously excellent candidates, I'll add, it would be wonderful if we could have um, people who live in the community apply for these positions. Uh, we are also seeking a diverse group of applicants because we want our police department to represent the community. Uh, so I'm asking just as the chief did, uh, that if anyone has any contacts names, friends, relatives, et cetera, who might be interested, uh, please encourage them to apply. Thank you. Uh, let's see, there's one chat. Okay. Um, Mr. Mr. President, one last thing. Tomorrow night we'll be at Elkins Park Firehouse for our Cones with a Cop number three. Uh, oh. The 24th will be at the Glenside Firehouse. So we'll be at Elkins Park Firehouse tomorrow night, 5 to 7 p.m. Please come and join us for some ice cream. And conversation how that and how did i miss the advertisement on that chief where was that <laughs> if it if it if it says ice cream i usually uh, jump at those things elkins park fire company five to seven tomorrow okay sign me up uh sorry for the interlude i had to make a uh, put that in my calendar i will i will be there um any other new business for the Board of Commissioners? Uh, Citizens Forum for the Board of Commissioners. Going once, going twice, sold. Oops. Uh, Just under the wire. Yes. Uh, go ahead, Citizen Forum. You, I, I'm sorry, I forgot your first name. Tom Mullen. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, this is Tom Mullen here, despite the fact that it Teresa? Teresa, yes, that's why she, I apologize. She's the one that has more hair than I do. Okay, uh, I just want to echo 
something that Commissioner Rappaport said, and uh, anything that we can get back from these energy companies for the privilege of running these volatile chemicals through our road would be a good thing. And last week I spoke about some of the research I did into um, Enbridge and Enbridge uh, with the various grant programs. And I looked a little deeper into that and the information that I had, I did send to Scott Lynch. But I decided going in that vein that I would look at some of the other companies that we have in the township and see what they have to offer. And I hope I'm not reinventing a wheel of information that we already have, but I'll proceed with a couple of examples. Um, I looked into Walmart and saw that they do, do grants from anywhere from $250 to $5,000, and they do community and economic development, diversity and inclusion, education, environmental sustainability, health and human services, hunger relief, healthy eating, public safety, and quality of life issues. And I'll give one more example. I looked at the Williams Energy Company. I know that we talk about Enbridge all the time, and I talk about Enbridge all the time, and people are probably tired of that. But uh, I looked at Williams programs, and they um, will take requests that provide a public benefit in the arts and humanities, fire departments, faith-based organizations that don't require individuals to be participants in that particular faith, uh, environmental programs, health and human services, libraries, and youth and extracurricular activities. I also compiled a series of links for similar programs for Target, Wells Fargo, Home Depot, and Trader Joe's. I also uh, took another list of companies that donate, companies that donate large amounts of money, but also those companies that uh, do business in Cheltenham, Chick-fil-A, Starbucks, Verizon, Aldi's, CVS, and Exxon. I also bookmarked a Pennsylvania grants and research and resource directory. Um, so if it could be of service or of help to the township, I would be willing to pass on my email the detail details all of these points to someone. Uh, yeah, Scott, absolutely, you... Tom. I, I was going to ask, can, can you pass along that information to Allison Elliott? Sure. Assistant Township Manager. Sure. Um, there are a lot there. So, uh, Allison, perhaps uh, you can turn some of those back to Tom and ask him for his help in applying for those. It sounds like he just volunteered. I was going to say, I think we're going to have to hire another grant writer or volunteer another grant writer. Right, I know. <laughs> I, I realized that as he was going through his long list. That's that's why I'm suggesting that perhaps, uh, perhaps for some of these, um, I, I don't necessarily want to categorize them as smaller, but perhaps for some of these smaller grant opportunities, uh, perhaps we can ask for volunteers from the community, uh, either those with experience or those with uh, the time and inclination who could help us um, apply for some of those. Because Tom, you're making a good point, but as you know, the, there is a time factor involved. Sure. Um, and to the extent that some of those can easily be filled out by, um, by a volunteer resident, um, I, for one, would think that would be a good idea. Others may have other suggestions. Commissioner yeah, has a suggestion. Bearing in mind that these are uh, nonprofits or 501c3s, that which they would be recipients. Right. Go ahead, Commissioner Rappaport. Yeah, I, knowing how busy our staff is, still many of these need a um, municipality as the partner. Um, and we have a number of citizen advisory committees mm -hmm. um, that may or may not be, be willing to take on some of right. these if mm -hmm. we ask them, if we give that to them as a, as um, a project, as a project mm -hmm. or um, perhaps 
we could come up with a new citizen committee to handle some of these in a more miscellaneous or uh, you know, a, a more uh, generalized rather than real specific uh, to, to go after that. It still is gonna require a certain amount of liaison with our staff. Okay, thank uh, you. Uh, yeah. Or the mayor. Does, does the township have a list of potential recipients where people have registered as nonprofit or 501c3s? Does anyone know? I don't have the answer to that. I believe that we would don't. certainly facilitate trying to figure out where to direct where to direct these things. I believe we do, and I can work with the tax office to get that info for you. Thank you. Uh, Darlene Melton, do uh, you have a citizens forum comment? Darlene. Darlene, you're you're muted, but if you have a I'm comment. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm half asleep. Um, uh, when Tom made that uh, question, there is a website in regards to um, nonprofits and, and um, businesses and things of that nature. Um, I'm not sure of how, how, how you would kind of I guess, uh, figure out how many organizations or businesses that we have in the township, but there are websites that will let you know if they are actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I guess in a position to, to be the 501c3 or to be able to get funds or to help or whatever. Okay, thank you, Darlene. You're welcome. Uh, I'm going to uh, Jerry has a make a motion to adjourn. Uh, Jerry Her Jerry Brown has her hand. <laughs> Where's Jerry? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, good, Go ahead, Jerry. Good evening, everybody. Just on a happy note, uh, just want to remind everyone Lamont Community Day uh, next Saturday from two to five uh, in front of the Lamont Center. So I would like to extend the invitation out to all of you to come and join us for a fun day, okay? Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. I will now take a motion to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor say aye. 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 That passes unanimously. I wish to thank uh, my fellow commissioners, the township staff and the public. Have a good evening. <laughs>